All right, we're gonna do intro four in our print packet. Uh, just like the intro three, this is a mill frame. This happens to be a mill frame pocket boundary, an inside pocket boundary. But I wanna start adding a few more things here um, where we're doing more processes. We're gonna face the top of this part off and then we're gonna go cut the pocket, the frame pocket in that's shown on the print. So one thing I wanna talk about, whenever I'm teaching or talking about face milling, I always try to explain it this way. So a lot of people will touch off all their tools or touch off the top of the part or the, the raw material that they're cutting and make the top of that surface zero. Then if they're gonna machine a quarter inch off of that particular part, they will make their facing move negative 0.25. And that works just fine. However, now I have to add that quarter inch depth to all of my features on the part, and I'm not using print dimensions. I'm using the depth of a feature on the print plus that quarter inch because I made zero the top of the stock that's no longer there. So what I like to do is make the top of the block, or my zero, whatever below whatever amount I'm gonna take off of that block. So in this little graphic here, you can see that my Z start is going to be whatever the amount is I wanna face off, and the Z bottom will actually be zero in my program. So I won't start at 0.1 and end at negative 0.25, I would start at 0.1 and end at zero, for example. So I just wanted to cover that and kind of put that out there for people to think about if you normally would put a negative value for a facing move. So let's go ahead and get started so we can do intro four. The first thing we're gonna do is start a new program. So I'm gonna to go to Program Manager, New, Conversational. I'm gonna set my stock geometry. So I go to Part Setup, More, Stock Geometry. We're gonna do a box. I'm gonna manually size that box. And I'm going to look at the print dimensions here for final size. 4.13 in X. It is 4.88 in Y. And one inch thick. I'm going to make it 1.25 thick. Our finished dimension is one inch, so that means we're gonna take an eighth of an inch off of this particular block. Now, to show that in graphics, I don't have to do anything as I go and I put my mill frame block in, my mill face, all of that. It's going to draw correctly. But to better represent what I'm gonna do on the machine, I wanna make sure that I set up my graphics, I set up my tools, I set up all those things correctly so when I hit draw, I'm gonna see on my graphic screen what I'm gonna see on the machine. So I'm gonna to go to my reference position and I'm gonna raise this block up the amount I wanna take off, 0.125. Now there's a video explaining stock geometry and how these reference positions work. If you are a little confused or you haven't seen this before, you may wanna go take a look at that. Basically all I did is I took the solid model that's gonna be in my graphics, and I raised it up an eighth of an inch. So there's an eighth of an inch of material above zero, so when I come in, I cut across, you'll see that being removed. Front left corner is zero, so I don't need to move anything in X or Y. Next, I'm gonna set up our, our tools. So we have a, an 11 16th center cutting end mill, and we have a three inch face mill with 45 degree inserts. I'm gonna do something that we haven't done yet, and I'm going to pick a tool number for a tool that I know is already in the control. I'm gonna to select tool one. Many times you will wanna create a program using tools that have already been described but are no longer in the machine. Or let's say in this case, I would call up tool one, which is a half inch end mill, take it out of the spindle, change out the physical tool that's in the collet, put it back in, re-describe it, touch it off. So we don't always start with a fresh number of a tool that doesn't exist. 
And it's usually not common practice for machinists to go in or operators and delete tools that they've taken out. We simply just change the description for those. So I'm gonna make tool number one a three inch face mill. So under tool type, I'm gonna change it from end mill to face mill. I'm gonna make it a three inch diameter because that's what our tool link or our tool list says. I would change those characteristics, the speeds and feeds, and then retouch off this tool if this was in real life. But I'm just going to change the number, the type, and the diameter in this case. Now, if we go to the little more button here with the arrow, I can go to advanced tool settings. And if you go back and look at the tool setup um, video that we did, we explained this there as well. But if I can accurately describe my solid model or my stock geometry, then I need to be able to accurately describe my tool so it's going to look like what the finished part looks like when I'm done. So as I go through here, it shows me what these fields are asking for on the uh, tool itself. So there's the, the cutting diameter, the outside diameter, the length of cut, that is probably going to be, let's, I don't know, 375. The tool length is going to be around six inches. That's the full length of the tool, or basically what you would get when you touched off the tool. The angle, in this case, is per insert. It's not included like you would see on a drill point. It's actually per side, and it's a 45 degree. That's what it tells us in our um, tool list. Number of flutes, let's say this one has five of them, and there is a 31 thousandths corner radius on each insert. We're gonna go clockwise, and this color means that it will sequentially go through this color palette every tool. So the first tool would be whatever color is in there first, the second tool would be the next color, and so forth. Or we can pull down here and force this particular tool to a specific color. I do that often with face mills and engraving tools, for example. I want a very light color on a very, with a very dark color on that light background, or vice versa. But anyway, so we've got this tool set up. We go ahead and hit exit. And now we can set up our next tool. We'll go to tool two. It is a end mill. Again, I'm, I'm trying to just set up a tool that using numbers that we've already used. It's 11 16th, so 11 divided by 16. There's our tool length, our speeds and feeds, so forth. Again, for graphics, we don't have to set up speeds and feeds and so forth. The graphics will work just fine. Obviously, we want to make sure these are right before we would go to the machine and actually cut. All right, so now we're ready to go and insert our first block. So I'm going to go to the input screen. I'm going to go part programming and I'm gonna insert milling. We've done a circle, we've done a frame, we're also gonna do frame in this um, program as well, but this time I wanna start out with a facing block. So the face block is very much like the mill frame. It's asking for a corner, I'm gonna tell it zero, zero. One of the corners, one of the four corners of the part and it wants to know the length and width. I'm gonna give it the exact dimensions of my stock geometry. So 4.13 and 4.88. I'm gonna start at 0.125 and I'm gonna end at zero. Again, we wanna start above the part, but we want that final cut to be establishing the Z0 of our part. So our Z bottom will be zero. I'll put in tool one for my facing mill. And now we have some uh, settings here for what kind of facing move do we wanna do. We have X and Y unidirectional. That means it's going to cut, pick up, reposition, drop down to our, our Z depth, cut again, pick up, reposition and drop so it will always be cutting in that same direction. Or we have X or Y bi-directional, where we're going to move, step over, come back, and we'll kind of zigzag across the part until it's completed. In our case, we're going to use X bi-directional. I wanna go over and then come back, 
step over and then come back the other direction. Eighth of an inch is not a lot, so I don't really need to peck that. Often I would have to put a peck value here depending on what, how much material you're removing and what kind of material it is. And I'm going to do a 10 inches um, plunge feed. Now that we have completed block one, we're actually ready to run, but we have to do our mill frame also. So I'm going to click, make sure we're highlighted on the block number, and I'm going to click next block. We're going to do a milling frame. So now we're doing mill frame block two. We set this up just like we did in our intro three print. We want to pick one of the corners of the frame. I'm going to do the bottom left corner. And that is 0.313, very bottom left corner. You can see a dimension there. So our X is 0.313. Our Y is 1.5. And that is to that theory or theoretical corner of that frame. Obviously, we have some corner radiuses in there because we're cutting the inside of a frame with a round tool. But we're also going to form those radiuses based on our 0.38 typical dimension on our print. But we wanted to find the theoretical corner. So that's what we did there. Now the width of our frame in X is 3.5. And the length in Y is 1.88. We're going to start at 0.1. And our final depth is going to be a minus 0.38. Corner radiuses we said are 0.38 on all four of them, so we don't have to do anything in the corners tab to change the individual corners. We can blend on and off on the bottom side. That's going to be fine. We're going to use tool number two, and it's going to be a pocket boundary. We're going to do this pocket boundary from the inside or the center outward. We could also do it from the outside inward, from the outside edge towards the center, or we have two high-speed uh, pocketing algorithms for zigzag or one way. Basically, that would mean that I could determine a, a step over percentage of the tool that I never want that tool to um, engage more than that particular percentage, and it would then go in, kind of whittle out corners and things like that. We'll talk about that talk about that on another print coming up. Here we're just going to do simply outward. We're going to start from the center, pocket out. I'm going to peck depth this at 0.125. We have some speeds and feeds that came in with the tool. Now we're ready to draw. So you can see our face mill there going across. Now we're coming in and pocketing that out. Now, if we look at that from another view here, you can see that our Z0 is, in fact, the top of the finished block. If I slow this down and come in with our face mill, you can see that 0 is below the surface of that material by whatever we set in our um, stock geometry when we raised it up an eighth of an inch. So that's how we would add a mill frame and a uh, mill face block to our program. That's the first time we've used more than one block in the program. And that's how we would program intro four.